all right welcome back twitch and welcome back youtube let's get back to just another game Ma Rain master detective archives rain code Our last time we went through three routes trying to explore how the murder was occurred and the only or how the murder was committed i guess is a better way to put that the only way we uh, we the only thing we really identified was none of the routes actually told us who did it for every route we went through the person who was most obvious wouldn't have had the opportunity to actually execute the poisoning for one reason or the other so none of the girls could have done it it's time to take a look at a new perspective and that's what we're just about to do i suppose that's your different perspective whoa I'm afraid of heights. I'm a watchmaker. Ah, uh, yes. Exactly what I would have expected. Oh, we're really walking on another side. Well, if we keep moving, then... It's another door to explore, anyway. Look, it's a new route! Why? Why did the incident happen? No fair, you might get to have all the fun! <laughs> you think this is fun? Why are you jealous of this? The question is, why did this happen? I guess we're on the why done it route. We can't identify how, then maybe we'll like identify why. It's about the reason why the case occurred. Why did it Meaning, have to be Karen who died? This is the route where we seek the motive. Looks like we need to focus on figuring out the culprit's motive from here. Yeah, I know cases always deal with motive, but wouldn't it have been better to start with this route from the get-go? We couldn't have identified well, the means or the opportunity. This route is important because we cleared out the how routes. We couldn't identify That's the means or the opportunity. We can only go with the motive. Dungeons. Oh, but, sorry. I, I guess that's how it is. You're absolutely right, Shinigami. Let's keep going for now. Oh good, it's a normal hallway. The most normal hallway. Completely normal. I've seen hallways Before like this. Before we figure out the culprit's motive, what kind of person was caught in anyway? In Legend of Zelda. Was she cute? Yes. But more importantly, she was next in line to be star of the theater club. She was considered to be the best actress among the club's current members. So the culprit was envious because she was so popular. They killed Karen so they could become the star instead. No, I don't think it's that simple. Hey, who are you calling simple? You. Six months ago, the leading member of the theater club also died in a separate case. Top actresses dying one after another? Is their club cursed or something? This whole city is cursed. The name of the student who died was Aiko. Her death was ruled a suicide by jumping off the school, but Kurumi doubted that was the case. Kurumi, huh? She's all right. All right? Anyway, I doubt it's a coincidence for people to die in such quick succession. This case may have been triggered by Aiko's death. So if we find the truth behind Aiko's death, maybe we can figure out the motive in this case. The truth behind Aiko's death. Hey, look! Oh, hey, that's Aiko. That Aiko? Whoa, she's cute too! Let's go talk to her! I think every girl is cute. She's about to get a taste of my full and undivided attention. That poor, poor girl. 
You can already tell women will be his downfall. Oh well, it's not like you're any better off with yours truly, Master. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's about what I expected. Was that Desihiko? Whoa, what the? Come on, concentrate, concentrate! Yuma, this is bad. The crowd's giving way beneath our feet. Yeah, I can tell. Heiko. Hurry and catch her! I love the tragic types! No! We're trying to figure out the truth behind her death! Good luck, Master! Was Aiko's death six months ago a suicide or a homicide? We're gonna have to go into a homicide. Answer. Aiko's death six months ago was actually a result of murder. Where was Aiko murdered? Rooftop or the flower bed? This if it's a murder, answer. it would have been the flower bed. The location of Aiko's murder is the flower bed. What weapon was used to kill Aiko? The brick from the flower bed. This is the answer. And we can prove that. The brick with Aiko's blood on it had a very unnatural splatter pattern. After the culprit hit her with the brick, they returned it to its original position. You notice that the blood pattern cuts off. Who murdered Aiko? It would have had to have been the first person to discover the body. It would have been Karen. Aiko's death was not a suicide by jumping, and Karen clearly lied in her testimony. Karen killed Aiko! All right, let's keep following her, Yuma. I can tell Aiko's death wasn't a suicide from the evidence photos. Her shoes were neatly placed on the roof, but there was dirt on them that looked like it came from the flower bed. I think Aiko was told to meet at the flowers behind the school building and then murdered there. So the shoes were taken to the roof afterwards. The murder weapon is likely a brick from the flower bed. The brick with Aiko's blood on it had a very unnatural splatter pattern. If she fell from above and hit her head, the blood stain wouldn't get cut off in that way. I'm sure that after the culprit hit her with the brick, they returned it to its original position. But do you have evidence that Karen did it? I can hear if the restraint. If Aiko didn't die from jumping, Karen's testimony makes her highly suspicious. She said she heard something fall and went to inspect it. I get it. Hearing a sound that never happened means she's obviously lying. Karen lied. And the reason why she lied? She made it appear like Aiko jumped. If that's the case, then the one who killed Aiko is Karen. Disappeared. Damn it! I can't even help the girl who needs it most. Help her? She was dead long before you could help her. Anyway, this must be the roof I could supposedly jump from. Uh, hey, why did Cotton kill Aiko? I thought an all-girls school would be more sunshine and rainbows than 
Murder. You haven't been to many all-girls schools. If all a grip was used as the murder weapon, then it could have been an impulsive crime. So Cotton might not have been planning to kill Aiko when she called her there. You mean they were talking and it turned into a crime of passion? That's so cliche. <laughs> Maybe they were discussing their acting careers. They had a disagreement and it turned to violence. Well, if this caused the other murder case, then is the motive... revenge? Yeah, they weren't fighting over Aiko's spot. They wanted to get back at Cotton for taking it away. Meaning... the culprit is whoever cares the most about Aiko? Then which of the suspects is it? In fact, where do we even go from here? We got the motive, but there's still no path. This is different from the other dead ends. I think there's a mystery around here. Something must be hidden here. Oh god, why? Okay, but I, th I thought she was gonna slash me. Just curious, can I talk to either one of you? Can look at this spot. This place? So high up. We're above even the clouds. Better be careful not to fall. Hey! So you're saying you don't want me to push you, or...? Hey! There's no or. I definitely do not want you to push me. we were looking for? We're so high up. When did this happen? Master, look over the air! What's that? It doesn't seem connected to anything else. Which means that could be the Who location. So the true culprit is over there then? But how do we reach it? It's not connected to any other route. What, are you freezing up? Scared of heights or something? Oh, it's not that. Uh, about those three roots. Pencil! A pen? You carry that around with you all the time? Of course. Who knows when I'll be asked for my autograph? Oh lord. Done. Isn't it perfect? I'm just as good at drawing maps as I am at remembering a pretty face. This is the how roots when seen from above, right? What about it? Well, this is a dungeon, right? So maybe there are some secret paths in here. Secret paths? See? If you look at it this way, doesn't it all seem like the same road? Right. The three how routes are connected into a single route all the way to the who room. Wait, all three are connected? That's it. I think I've got it. That's the hidden truth behind the how route. There's only one explanation for how the victim could have been poisoned. What? Seriously? Not bad. You finally made yourself useful. Yay! Shinigami complimented me! <laughs> I love you, Shinigami! Wasn't I a good boy? I deserve a treat, right? If you think you've got this, I'll back you up. Lay it all out! Oh god, this might actually break Desuhiko. Puzzle time. Puzzle it out. The only way the crime was possible was by having and blank. 
Okay, I kind of do wish it would spin a little bit faster than this. I might turn that off. I didn't know it was going to be this so uh, slow. This actually wastes a lot of time. That's right. Good Lord Thighs, the only way the crime was possible was by having an accomplice. None of the girls could have done it alone. That's right, accomplices. The sentence the I truth didn't of this finish. case is that Yoshiko, Warona, and Kurane were all accomplices and committed this crime together. Accomplices? But don't they hate each other's guts? It's the truth. I realized it once you drew this map, Desuhiko. The three How routes that we explored were all dead ends. Each of them were suspects but they were all ruled out because of certain details of the case. That makes sense. If we look at them separately, we get dead ends. But by connecting all three routes like this and looking at it as a single criminal act, it clearly becomes one path forward. They were accomplices that committed a single crime. This murder would have been impossible to commit alone. We figured that out during the How route. But if the three of them worked together, they could make it possible. Hey, a pickaxe! Huh? That'll come in handy. What's this? I guess we're supposed to break the wall? Sounds like fun! I'm in! It's all thanks to my help, don't you think? And don't you forget it. You're the one who's going to forget it. <laughs> anyway, let's check it out. We have to make sure we're on the right track. Why don't I just use the solution blade? Alright, next up is Kamikaze. Master got blown to pieces. <laughs> That's what happens when you use a sacrifice spell. <laughs> you died, so it's game over. Time to return to the title screen. Well, that's what I want to do, but I'll give you one more try and take you back to the selection. <laughs> that's another Be sure to pick the right one next time, okay? That's another Dragon Quest spell. I had to try it. All right, zoom. I think Hocus Pocus is too, but I don't remember what it does. It's not as commonly used as the other as uh, the other two. By separating the house. The three of them divided up the tasks that needed to be done to pull off the murder. Don't you think so, Yuma? Yeah, I think it's the only way. Huh? Ah! <laughs> oh, you sure sound confident. You're not the one getting your throat slit. How did the three work together to pull off an impossible and now, crime? There's a new problem to solve. We have to expose the secret behind their complicity. How exactly they cooperated together and the timeline of the crime. G got it. The timeline, huh? Then the first thing to discuss is. Uh, it would have to be, how did the poison get mixed into the glass? Without that, you don't have a, a weapon. Are you sure you want to take the, how is the poison mixed into the glass route? And don't blame me if you die. Sure. Are you sure you want to pick that door? I yeah, I... Or am I, I wrong? Something... The Never door. mind. Watch out! It's falling over! No! Ah! I died! Okay, that wasn't it. Think about this again. Guess that was the wrong one. 
Try thinking about how the crime was committed from the beginning. All right, then it was how was the poison brought to the theater hall? I mean, if they're going to want us to go in order of the, the color that the we saw, hall. then this was you it. Sure about that? Let's start with the poison being brought to the theater hall. Their conspiring began with how was the poison brought to the theater hall. It's a route we already explored to the very end, so let's blast through it! Hey, wait! <laughs> <laughs> to the Midnight Channel! <laughs> the only person who could have brought the poison to the theater hall was... Yoshiko, right? Yeah, the poison neutralizes after 30 minutes, so it had to be brought into the theater during the show. Hell of a view, Desahiko. As assistant, only Yoshiko could have done it. Looking back, the reason they chose poison as the murder weapon was to establish an alibi. The poison was only active for 30 minutes, which gave the other girls an alibi. Yoshiko went to the lab for the poison as soon as the performance began. She had the extra glass hidden in her bag. And after she brushed poison onto it, she put it back in her bag and returned to her seat in the front row as if nothing happened. The problem is, what happened next? <laughs> you here. You're off, Master. Y yeah. Hope I don't run out of blood. What did Yoshiko do with the poison glass after bringing it? Well, it wouldn't have the only person she could have handed it to would be Warana. Yeah, his hair pin is just like. This the, how was the poison mixed into the glass root? That's kind of a common trope wow. with protagonists. It's like it's something really like connected. an idiot mark. All right, let's keep going and reach the truth. It's supposed to be like an idiot Whoa. hairstyle. Again? D hey, you said Yoshiko handed the poison glass over to Waruna, but... Waruna was performing on stage, right? How could she receive the glass while on stage? The only time I can think of is when they turned off the lights. Yoshiko sat on the right edge of the front row close to the wings, where the actors enter and exit from scenes. She probably stood up when the lights went out and left the poisoned glass near the right wing. Even if she couldn't get on stage, she could at least do that within five seconds. Then, Warna picked up the glass and hid it under her costume. The costume check happens before the performance. So she got around that by receiving the cup during the performance. I see. So they passed the baton during the five seconds the lights were out. The two of them must have rehearsed it as much as the rest of the play. But what happened after that? Suppose Waruna did get the poison glass. How did she swap it with the real glass while the play was still ongoing? A few moments after the blackout, there's a scene where Warna approaches the shelf. It only lasts two or three seconds, but Warna's hands on the shelf are completely hidden from the audience. At that moment, Warna could have switched out the original glass with the poisoned one. So they used the play itself for their seemingly impossible crime. Talk about guts. This is something only thespians could pull off. <laughs> Shinigami? <laughs> Isn't there a safer way down? <laughs> Master, hurry up and break this one down too! Right. We're never gonna get tired of seeing Desahiko <laughs> flung into walls. And getting tired of that. <laughs> How was the poison glass chosen? Karane guided to it. All right, we got this one too. Only a bit more. Let's keep going. Wait, can't we 
take a break. You're not the one running. This is the final one. It's the how was the poison glass chosen route. From here, it's exactly as we solved it before. Kurune told Karin beforehand to take the glass the spotlight hits first. And then, after confirming the poisoned glass from the catwalk above, the spotlight was pointed directly at it. And that's the method behind the murder weapon. Method? Sounds more like madness if you ask me. <laughs> that solves this mystery. We've almost reached the truth. Seriously? That's terrible. <laughs> huh? Why? Because I haven't gotten Shinigami to fall for me yet. Uh, don't worry, it's not That's gonna happen. That's not gonna happen, even if you stay here for a hundred years. In fact, I basically hate your guts. <laughs> you know, beyond the hate, there could be love. It's kind of like traveling the globe. You and I can go in opposite directions. But eventually, we'll meet. That's the dumbest thing I've ever That's heard. That's a stretch. Ugh, I feel sick. This is the last wall. Who Master, murdered are you ready? Karen? Let's solve this thing. Right. Yoshiko. Warina, Karane, or all of the above. Yes, it fell. And behind that door is the Who Room. We finally made it. It's time to end this, Master. Looks like all the culprits are here, but there. Why do they look so sad? How boring! You call yourselves the final bosses of the Mystery Labyrinth? Then start acting like it! <laughs> Might as well guard the truth till the end at this point! <laughs> <laughs> You can just put me on your head to start. God Shinigami. Let's do this, Master. No. Photo of Yoshiko and Aiko. It appears the two of them were cut out from a larger photo. You're wrong! Huh? Come on! You did it, Master! 
Yeah. Let's do it, Master! Shut up! Don't come any closer! I... I did it all alone! I don't know about the others. Don't come any closer! There's nothing connecting us! A photo of Warina and Aiko. It appears the two of them were cut out from a larger photo. You're wrong! Huh? Come on! You did it! Great job! That's right. A photo of Kurane and Aiko. It appears the two of them were cut out from a larger photo. You're wrong! Huh? Come on! What's going on here? I thought they hated each other. No, that probably isn't true. Uh-huh. What do you mean by that? If you put together the three photos they each have... They're all in the same picture? That's the truth. A group photo of Aiko, Yoshiko, Warana, and Kurene. No need for mercy! Let's do this, Master! No! 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 Stop! 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 Stop it! Get, <laughs> Get away from me! A group photo of Aiko, Yoshiko, Warana, and Kurane. Everyone is smiling happily. This is the truth of the case! This is just a guess, but you three weren't actually on bad terms with each other, were you? In fact, it was all an act to get revenge for Aiko. You all cherished the same picture with her. It was originally a single photo of you all together, with Aiko in the middle. You were all close friends. And when you connect the pictures together... Everyone is there, smiling. So... why? 
Come on, we've got work to do before you get all sappy. Let's go. One more push and we'll be done with this labyrinth. <sighs> What would a hero do? A real defender of justice would defeat evil here and now and be done with it. But I'm no hero. All I want is the truth. And the truth is right here. So why go any further? Will solving this mystery really make anyone happy? Master, do you sympathize with them? That's not something a detective should do. Your job is to solve mysteries, isn't it? If so, you have to expose the truth. You have to prove it in a way anyone can understand and anyone can see. Detectives aren't defenders of justice. They're defenders of truth. Defenders of truth. A detective must never overlook a mystery. Any and all truths must be exposed. A detective must always prioritize solving a case. Emotions must be discarded to reach a perfect solution through a perfect deduction. It's easier said than done. Yuma, if you can't do it, I can take your place. No, I'll do it. I'll take responsibility. I'll see this through. Deduction de Namon. Alright, what do we have here? Let's look at our pieces. Um, glasses of swap, note in the script, the brick. Okay. What weapon did Karen use? Psycho's cause of death. Discuss us. We don't have that unlocked yet. Where is Yoshiko headed? I don't think we have that unlocked yet. Excuse me. I, I got glasses swapped in the script. Okay. So we swap the glasses here. Did I mean to break myself again? Oh, I don't know. I do like to torture myself, apparently. It's a bad habit. All right, so we can go, we can do these basically. I mean, it's a Spike Chunsoft game. It's gonna have fucking emotional damage, and yet I continue to play them. Which just shows I'm a fucking fool. Alright. We have the boots. the trio commit the crime. Braika.
Step right up! Step right up! A tragedy that struck an Academy stage! The death of a high school girl casting a shadow over four bickering theater club members! Truth bombs are about to be dropped! Time for the deduction denouement! This case begins with Aiko's death six months ago. Aiko was thought to have committed suicide by jumping off the roof. But the truth caught and murdered her. The shoes left on the roof had dirt on them from the flower bed at the crime scene. The blood stains on the bricks were also unnatural. And it was obvious that an amateur had faked it. If it wasn't a suicide, it would contradict Cotton's testimony. However, she didn't originally intend to kill Aiko. It was a crime of passion. So they got into an argument, Cotton saw red, then boom? Women are so scary! Yoshiko, Waruna, and Kurane probably realized the truth behind what happened. The three teamed up to avenge Aiko. They used the dress rehearsal to commit this crime. Regardless of the reason, getting together to plan a murder is pretty crazy. Yoshiko and the audience was to bring the poisoned glass into the theater hall. Once unsealed, the poison is harmless after 30 minutes. So, she went to the lab 15 minutes after the play began. The poison container is too big to transport unnoticed. So she applied it to the glass in her bag with a paintbrush. Thus, the poison glass was created! She brought it back to the theater hall, then went on standby at the right end of the front row. Lorna, who was acting on stage, was to switch out the poisoned glass. During the five-second blackout 30 minutes into the play, Yoshiko placed the poisoned glass in the wings. Warana, on stage, retrieved it and hid it under her costume. Then, in the scene where she approaches the shelf, she exchanged the glass there with the poisoned one. Switching in the murder weapon on stage while everyone is watching? What a pervy exhibitionist! What's perverted about that? And Kurane, on the lights, would guide Karin to take the poisoned glass. Then came the duel of poison cups! The two glasses on the shelf had juice poured into them. Cotton and Warana shuffled them in a way the audience couldn't see. But Kurane, who was on the catwalk directly above the stage, saw exactly which glass held the poison. She confirmed the location of the poisoned glass and shone the spotlight on it first. Cotton drank from that glass 45 minutes after the start of the play. Winner, winner! Poisoning complete! That was so long! Good job! Kurane told Cotton of a change in stage direction, where the victim was to take the glass the spotlight hits first. Cotton followed this instruction to take the poisoned one. The whole sequence of events for this crime would have been impossible for a single person. Their cooperation was also a means to conceal their involvement. But I can't shake the feeling that there was some other reason behind it. A crime committed by ruthless criminals. Those loathsome culprits are... Yoshiko! Waruna! Kurame! It was you! Wait, what? They may have pretended to always be at odds with one another. But deep down, they were bonded through their shared admiration for Aiko. Is my answer.
Was there really no other way? Was there no way to prove Karin did this without killing her? That's not possible. Not in Kanai Ward. The Peacekeepers bend the truth whichever way they want to. The three girls couldn't get justice from them. Which led to this crime. But that... it doesn't make it right! How long did you put on an act for this? Aiko... was our sunlight. Wherever she went, we were meant to be there with her. She was... everything to us. We were together ever since we were young. Her dream was our dream. We were nothing special. But she called us her rivals. Those words encouraged us to carry on. But now she's gone. Everything's hopeless now. The three of us investigated Aiko's death. I used my parents' connections to view top-secret case files. But no matter what we did, the Peacekeepers refused to reopen the case. Because Karen's father is a big shot at Amaterasu Corporation. That's why we had to do it ourselves. We wanted revenge. Revenge? became everything for us. And to get it, we pretended to fight amongst ourselves. We are actors, after all. But... we don't have to anymore, right? We don't have to keep this up. We put on quite a show. Didn't we, Aiko? This leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Then again, most cases do. But that's the end. We can finally return to the real world. I hope the girls open up like that in the real world, too. No, I don't think they can. Huh? Why is that? Oh, also, <laughs> where's Shinigami? here well what do you think did you fall in love with me I know you did you must have yeah I already told you I will never fall for you you are seriously getting on my nerves you're probably, annoying and exhausting probably a good thing he's gonna forget about you uh, Desuhiko <laughs> <laughs> Did you think I was serious? <laughs> I was just testing the bond between you two. <laughs> Our bond? It's more like a curse, at least to me. Uh, right. <laughs> I was just testing. <laughs> I wasn't serious <laughs> at all. I didn't get rejected, okay? I didn't. Uh, all right, just calm down. Anyway, let's do it. Time to exterminate the souls of the true culprits and destroy the mystery labyrinth. Wait, Shinigami, do we really have to do this? I mean, they... The reason why doesn't matter. I make my living reaping the souls of criminals. Because I'm Shinigami! Surging bloodlust. Overflowing despair. The brilliant soul of Shinigami! Shall expunge this cursed case! Death to all deplorables! 
Shinigami is not necessarily your friend. She is a god of death, for better or worse. So why did we make a pact with her is kind of a question. Pretty much. Morals don't play into it. When did you... Huh? What the... Wait, what just happened? Oh, oh, hold on, let's so calm down. What? What's going on? I knew it. <laughs> the evil murderers have been expunged once again! Oh, right. There's still one more job I gotta do. Traumatize everybody? Excuse me, everyone. The culprits behind this incident were Waruna, Karne, and myself. All three of us conspired to poison Karin. Uh, the way we got her to ingest the poison was... know what you people have done but next time it won't go your way remember that did you see that <laughs> she was staring at me the whole time she's got to be in love with me she is definitely not oh fine i guess she can keep the peace of my love as well <sighs> What's got you so down? All three of them just died out of nowhere. Nobody's to blame for that. There's no reason for either of us to feel guilty. Seems like all the memories from the mystery labyrinth are completely gone. She must Master, be a relief for you. We're in the clear. All three of their deaths won't be your fault now. That's not what I'm worried about. You're bright and sunny for watching three people die. Kurumi? Thank you for saving me. I knew you'd come to the rescue. <sighs> anyway, are you alright? The peacekeepers didn't harm you, did they? No, I'm fine. Hey, Yuma? I don't want to get in the way of this tearful reunion. <laughs> But uh, maybe we should get out of here. It'll be trouble if the peacekeepers come back. Oh, right. Shinigami's Let's ethics leave can be dismissed to an extent. Just like you're learning from Shinigami, Shinigami is kind of learning from you. But she is... I mean, that's the whole point of this is to illustrate that she's not something that can be comprehended. 
by uh, usual mortal mor morals, not mortals. Although I guess those too. By usual morals, she's not a human, even if she has big titties. I wanna head to the agency and put in a good word for you. I don't really get how it all ended, but I have a hunch. I mean, the lesson of this chapter is to really illustrate that Amaterasu controlled, like I said in the at the end of the last chapter, this really hammers home. Amaterasu controls justice in this town. What they say goes, and that leaves the people essentially powerless. Like, if, they, if the girls thought they could have gotten justice, they wouldn't have had to do this. Yuma, you did all the work, right? <laughs> huh? Huh, guess he's got good intuition. It's kind of a big <laughs> plot hole how <laughs> Karimi like never won't be really calling realized you that, from here on out. that they were friends. Let's keep working together, my man. Mind your manners as you walk your girl home. Does she have a home? <laughs> um, Yuma? Huh? What is it? This tension! Don't tell me! Is this where they made babies? <laughs> we are both very young for that! Did something happen? You seem down. I meant oh, they were all friends with her well, friend. They were all friends with Aiko, the especially if they'd solved, been together. Three lives were lost. Right. I didn't expect Yoshiko and the others to. <sighs> um, could it be that their deaths are related to your forte? What? Wow, we've got another sharp one. Master, I hope you know this, but if you say anything about our contract... Oh, sorry for saying something so strange. I know I'm off, right? Even if that were the case, you'd never tell me. <sighs> hey, Kurumi, there's somewhere I want to go. Will you come with me? Sure, I guess. It is a Spike Chunsoft game. They're trying to go for a record, I guess. How many people have died up to now? Five in the first case, four total in the second, five total here. We're up to 14 corpses and it's the chap it's chapter two. Kamasaki had a place like this. Please help me save this city. Save this city, huh? I managed to save Kurumi by solving the case. But I killed those three girls. I'm responsible for their demise. If I had let the peacekeepers deal with it, at least their deaths could have been prevented. What exactly did I even solve? It's not a true solution if we can't save everyone. What I gained in exchange for my memories isn't some convenient, mystery-solving tool. It's literally the power of a death god. What are you musing about? You can't reclaim the past, and you're not gonna get your memories back either. In the end, you just have to accept it. Accept it? Instead of believing in some vague thing like justice, just believe in the truth. They say there's only one truth, and there's only one type of person who can find their way to that truth. Detectives. Even if I have to sacrifice others to find it, 
I should let so many people die for the truth? Master, you keep going to extremes. It's part of why you're a greenhorn. Uh, seems like you still have much to learn under my guidance. What is the truth? Why did I become a detective to seek it? You? Huh? Oh, yes? I know I already said this, but... Thank you so much. You are exactly the kind of person I thought you were. What do you mean by that? You're my hero. I'm no hero. I was just trying to expose the truth. But thanks to you, I was saved. If you weren't around, I wouldn't be here today. That's why a detective who exposes the truth is a hero in my book. If there were more detectives like you in this city, maybe Aiko's death would have been solved earlier. I'm sure things would have been different. <sighs> Kanai Ward hasn't seen a hero like you in forever. That's why it's always been so dark here. So please, please continue to be our hero. A hero? Maybe before I lost my memories, I was trying to become someone's hero. This time, there was a steep price to be paid for exposing the truth. But even so, the truth must always be revealed. I want to believe I can save someone. I want to continue being the hero she says I am. Still, I don't want to use Shinigami's powers again. <laughs> don't act like you don't like it, Master! Well, I'm just glad you seem more motivated now. Oh, yeah. We made a promise, didn't we? I said I'd tell you about Kanai Ward's ultimate secret after the case was solved. Huh? Uh, oh, right. Oh, yeah, six people hey, died in Nail Man. You seem like you 16. weren't expecting much. But that's where you're wrong. Just between you and me, I am Kanai Ward's only informant. Informant? Are you serious? A high school girl informant? I'm still a beginner, though. I started three years ago after taking over from my grandfather. And now that the peacekeepers control the city, there isn't much of a demand for information anymore. No wonder you know so much about rumors. Besides... I haven't felt this nervous since I was chased by those peacekeepers. That also explains why the Peacekeepers were after you. <laughs> if Kurumi is an informant, maybe she does have some crucial information about Kanai Ward's ultimate secret. It also explained why she was tapped to be the culprit so quickly. So, Kurumi, what do you know about Kanai Ward's ultimate secret? Well... It's likely connected to the top-secret research that Amaterasu Corporation is conducting. I think it has something to do with why the Unified Government approved of Kanai Ward's isolation. Top-secret research? Approved the isolation? Kanai Ward has always been a city centered around Amaterasu. But there was a lot more freedom in the past. People were allowed to come and go as they pleased. It became an autonomous zone, free from the Yuji's influence, only a few years ago. The reason behind it has to do with the top-secret research that Amaterasu is conducting. But what <laughs> is the research? Ground. There's no guns in this game except for that the one. Details, but it's supposed to be able to change the entire structure of the world. All nations and enterprises worldwide want it. This research is what turned Amaterasu into a major global corporation. And that research is being done in Kanai Ward? I think so. It would explain why Kanai Ward's been isolated. It's so their research doesn't leak out. Research that can change the world? 
If that's true, it's some serious stuff. No wonder number one of the WDO would risk his neck here. Do you know any more details about that research? I do know a little bit. Grandpa risked his life to obtain one piece of confidential information about Amaterasu Corp. And I believe that somehow, it has to be related. What do you mean? Research to create a homunculus. An immortal monster. Homunculus? Immortal monster? Now, wait just a minute. Are you serious? I don't have any proof. But it's a fact that Amaterasu Corporation has previously researched homunculi. Homunculi? Being researched in this city? Is that Kanai Ward's ultimate secret? Immortal monsters? Homunculi? It's turned into a fantasy story out of nowhere! Oh, I'm sure not one to talk! <laughs> That's all I know. What fine, well, upstanding corporation wouldn't want to research you? immortal monsters? Although, most of it was left behind by my grandpa. Left behind? One day, my grandpa just vanished. He's been missing ever since. That's why I decided to take over where grandpa left off as an informant. So, do you think what I've shared might help? Yeah, this is huge, considering how I had nothing until now. Really? That's great! I'm actually useful to a master detective! Oh, um, about that master detective thing. Look, that's where my grandpa used to live! <sighs> that takes me back. I wish I could see him again. <sighs> oh well. And that's how you'll keep taking advantage of a high school girl. Huh. <laughs> We're already way, dealing Kurum, with death gods. Why do you think your grandfather disappeared? Could it be the peacekeepers? No, I don't think the peacekeepers have anything to do with it. Grandpa vanished before Kanai Ward became isolated. He was just suddenly gone. But I do believe I'll see him again someday. I could like it for Master, Shinigami. Master, forget about some geezer you don't even know. What about this homunculus stuff? Fire Emblem, um, yeah, it's interesting. Research. If Amaterasu Corporation is still researching some immortal monster in Kanai Ward, it makes sense why there'd be such tight security. They fear the secret leaking to the outside world. Maybe it even has something to do with the great global mystery that number one mentioned. Speaking of which, what could the great global mystery be anyway? There's too much stuff we don't know, but you're one step ahead of the other detectives now, yeah? Guess that flat-chested uggo is kind of useful. She's not flat-chested. Maybe I should stop calling her uggo now. I'll just call her flat. Still gonna hold on to that, huh? I guess this is technically an improvement. You're gonna keep this info to yourself, right? It'll help you get ahead of the other master detectives. No, I'll report this to everyone. This isn't something I can deal with alone. Ugh, how lame. Couldn't you strike a pose and shout something like, I'm coming for you, Amaterasu? I'll compromise and flip That's them off. not my role. All I can do is investigate Kanai Ward's ultimate secret just a little bit further. The rest should be left to the real master detectives to handle. <laughs> this is my fault as your mentor for babying you so much! You've become the kind of detective who only relies on others without trying to solve problems yourself! W what's wrong with relying on others? for today. 
The pleasure is all mine. <sighs> I'm kind of hungry. Maybe I should go buy a meat bun on the way home. What about a vegetable? You like those meat buns too, huh? Yes, I love them. I eat at least one every two days. I guess that's reasonable. They're kind of the comfort food of Kanai Ward. It's like I'm instinctively drawn to them. Oh, would you like to join me, Yuma? No thanks, I'll pass. I see. <laughs> um... Gave up a date. Meet again? Huh? Yeah, of course. That's great! If you ever need any information, you can count on me. See you later. Uh, I hope she's okay on her own. She's got those legs. She can I run. I couldn't bring myself to say, I'll walk you home. Just say it. What are you, 12? Do they eat anything else? Are you sure you don't want to go back to the agency? Weren't you running an errand a while ago? Oh, God. <sighs> You're right. She's going to die. Oh, no. I better hurry back. <laughs> Chief's dead. Starved to death. <laughs> it's ball all over again. <laughs> meat buns are just meat buns. It's just going to be a fucking running joke. Meat buns are soylent green! <laughs> a lot of things are meat. Homunculus research. I still can't believe it's true. Does it ring a bell, Chief? Unfortunately, I've never even heard of it. You sure it's not just some rumor? The way Kurumi explained it leads me to think it's true. Regardless, there's too little information. We lack anything definite at the moment. Still, it's better than having nothing at all. Well done, Yuma. Thank you. You're like a dog wagging its tail whenever you get complimented. You were late getting back, but I never imagined you'd get yourself into another mess. I am a protagonist. Ugh, what the hell is going on? Don't bite your tongue. Ugh, I'm so angry, I'm talking with a laugh! I'm really sorry. And your tail gets tucked between your legs whenever you get yelled at. <laughs> Stop looking Setting at my tail. Setting aside how I nearly died of hunger and that Yuma needs to be put on a leash. You picked um, another fight with the uh, base I am on keepers. A leash. I can't That's explain the it, biggest problem here. We weren't picking a fight. Besides, we got to expose the truth in the end. That look on Martina's face was awesome! Right, Yuma? That's not what I'm talking about! How can you be so relaxed? There, there, Lisp Man. Please remain calm. So, is it true the culprits in that case suddenly died? That makes it similar to what happened in the Nailman case. Moreover, it is also similar in that those involved in each case, like Desuhiko and myself, had their memories wiped. Let's really not think too there hard on too this. There are too many common traits to call it a coincidence. Uh, um, <sighs> the, the memories related to the case fingers. disappear. <laughs> Perhaps it is due to someone's forte. Uh, uh. No way. What kind of useless forte would that be? <laughs> Besides, no one here has an ability like that. Absolutely Could another not. master detective have found their way here? It'd be one thing if we were anywhere else in the world, but we're in Kanai Ward. This isn't the kind of place some ambitious master detective could barge into by himself. If someone got officially dispatched here, I would know. Anyway, why are you all looking so glum? 
The case is closed and we got new information. It's a fantastic step forward. It's springtime and all is right in the world. Spring? It rains all year long here. And we've had nothing but trouble. I'm now scared how this will end. Uh, how could it possibly the hell end? What's going on here? All it's spike like chainsaw of games death have a happy ending. <gasps> What's wrong, Vivia? You know what they say. The greater the detective, the more often they encounter death. Isn't that right, Yuma? All of them do. Uh, Depends on your definition of that. Happy does kind of apply to you, Yuma. In a way, you're like a death detective. Uh, don't take it the wrong way. I mean that as a compliment. But even if it offends you, I refuse to apologize. Apologizing is too much of a hassle. The death detective? You have a cool nickname, Yuma. Thanks, Fubuki. No way! I don't want a nickname like that! Really? But it sounds so awesome! It seems death has taken a liking to you, Yuma. That's one of your talents, in a way. Sheesh. I'll never understand this guy. I'll figure out how to discipline Yuma later. For now, we need to come up with a plan to handle the peacekeepers. You said this case involved Vice Director Martina, right? She's Director Yomi's right-hand woman. Yes, I we've heard. I heard she's both his close advisor and his mistress. What do you mean I'm you've sure heard? She make tells a move you. Somehow. Ah, I don't even want to think about it. What will they do? See? This is what I'm talking about! Everyone, brace yourselves! Are you serious? <laughs> They're not so. This is so fun! The agency is sinking. Where is everyone? Somebody... help! Hey! Master! Snap out of it! Come on! Kaboom! Oh, it sank, all right! <laughs> this is the bolt of judgment, the fire of purification, a supernova explosion! Hey! Who prepared that torpedo? Unfortunately, it was I, Martina Electro. Ah, uh, I figured it was you. That wasn't enough firepower! I told you to blow up the whole river and vaporize them, didn't I? Now it just looks like I'm causing chaos! Half-assed executions of the law are nothing but senseless violence! I told you to demonstrate perfect order! Listen to me. A clean and pure execution of the law is... Overwhelming, absolute, and completely blows everything away without a trace! I'm terribly sorry, Director Yomi. No matter. You are my beloved right hand. You only need to remain by my side. Yes, thank you. I will forever be by your side to serve you. Thing is... Even though you're my beloved right hand, you still need to be punished. Huh? You couldn't even solve a case caused by a couple of brats, not to mention the detectives escaped under your watch. But it's alright. Don't worry, 
You are my beloved right hand. I won't hurt you. I need you to stay pretty for me forever. I... I understand. So, what is my punishment? See this? It's a recent invention by Amaterasu Corporation called a High Performance Presser. It can compress up to 50 kilograms of material and instantly turn it into a cube. Even humans can be turned into pretty little cubes. Huh? I'll keep you on my person at all times, so you'll always be by my side. You are my beloved right hand. Please wait! What? You, you must be joking! Hey, you! Take my beloved right hand over there. Director Yomi, please wait! Please! Have mercy! Oh, Martina. There's something I wanted to ask you before you go. What's... love? <laughs> Take her away. Now, let's go find the corpses of those detectives that got blown up. Immortal monsters, huh? Good day, sir. Not. You don't know? I guess not, since you're still new. That's number one, the leader of the World Detective Organization. Th that's him? I had no idea. Why would someone that high up be here underground? There's a book vault here. It's a secret book vault that only number one can enter with his biometrics. It supposedly contains data from generations of great detectives, sealed books, and so on. <laughs> Didn't know that. Don't even think about going in there, newbie. I, I know who I hmm. Was it number one carrying an old book just now? I wonder what that book was. Curious? Well, how about you go investigate? You may be a trainee, but you're still a detective. Investigate? Me? <laughs> Kidding. Don't take it so seriously, Yuma. Wait, where am I? Beats the hell out of me. But weren't you by my side the whole time? Don't you know what happened to us? Like that time back at the Amaterasu Express. I was only able to stay awake back then because we just made the pact and we weren't fully synchronized yet. But that didn't work this time. Convenient. <laughs> when you lose consciousness, my vision also goes dark. Actually, do you remember drifting in the river after the explosion? You almost died. Hell, even as a death god, I thought I was gonna die. <laughs> this is no laughing matter. Anyway, because your biological activity stabilized, I was also able to wake up. Everything's a-okay so far. Plot magic. <laughs> the worst now, kind of magic. let's go find out where we are. I want to go exploring so fast. That's a bit dramatic. 
Where are we? This is... Is this a painting? I can't tell what it's depicting at all. Hmm, huh? truly an inspired piece. Shinigami, do you know how to interpret art? Definitely not. I'm just saying whatever pops into my head. <laughs> oh! It won't open. It's locked somehow. Say! Alright, we're kicking it down. I don't have that kind of strength. Do I look like Halara to you? Looks like a frying pan, sorta. Could be. Or it could be Monokuma. This, you know, this part here, this part in this section, kind of looks like Monokuma's head. Oh Ultra stylized, nice. but could be. I think this is what's called abstract. Looking at it makes me feel anxious. Hey! If it were up to you, Master, what would you title it? Cul-de-sac? Trash! <laughs> That's what it called for. <laughs> this is... It's not that large a television. It's a large TV built into the wall. The power's off so I can see myself reflected in the screen. <laughs> Master's thinking of using that giant screen to watch spicy videos. It's not what I'm thinking at all right now. Does that mean you're gonna think about it later? I think that's everything in this room. Take a quick look around just to be sure. Yeah, I don't see anything else. Christmas, everybody! Merry Christmas! We can now it's no longer Who's there. Hi there. Nice to meet you. I sure look suspicious, huh? Merry Christmas! Chapter two: A silent curtain call comes to an end. And now that it's Christmas. So does the stream. I was debating if I was actually gonna have to stretch it up a little bit further, but clearly not. Double S, double S, double S. A. <laughs> Damn it. All right. I will most definitely not be streaming tomorrow. Uh, I will definitely be streaming on Wednesday. There's always a possibility I'll be streaming on... Shima saw one-eyed man and his one-eyed snake. Thanks, lady. Uh, but Merry Christmas. Happy holidays to everybody. Have a good one tomorrow. I will definitely see you Wednesday at the least. Uh, if there's a possibility that I stream on Tuesday, I will put it out on Twitter. But we will pick up from here Wednesday for sure with Chapter 3. I'll see you then. Have a good night. Goodbye.